So if Jesus is the esteemed prophet and the Messiah, but what do you do with, but how can you esteem him if he said that like before Abraham was, I am like, I'm just trying to understand like, what's your take on those things? If we say, oh, he's going to come back to, to be the righteous one, to, to live and, and stand up to the antichrist. Then if he, if he made those claims, then, um, how, how can he be a good prophet then? if he made claims to be the son of God, but you don't accept that? That's an interesting question. There's, there's two answers to that. One, there's nowhere in the Bible um, and, uh, where Jesus Christ said, I am God. Okay. doesn't exist. He never said, I am God. Nowhere. And there's also nowhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ himself says, I am the son of God. Right? So there's been statements he's made where people have symbolically interpreted it differently, but it can be interpreted in many ways. Okay. So I would ask you, like, do you have a verse where Jesus said, I am God, worship me, or I am the son of God? Well, before Abraham existed, I am. I am what? I am, the great I am. All right, so that's interpretation, right? I can, I can say, I can understand to me that I am now the messenger of God. Okay. Right, so we're, we're filling in the blanks, right? So I'm saying, does Jesus Christ himself say directly, I am God, worship me, he rather said, I of my own self can do nothing. When a man came to him and said, oh, a good master, he said, why do you call me good? But there's only one that is good who is God. He separated himself from God. Right? And he said, speaking to the people, at no time have you seen the Father on earth. He's speaking to them. He, they're looking at him. He said, no time have you seen the Father on earth. When he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he went down and prostrated like Muslims pray like on the forehead. And he said, my God, my God. Right? He was calling on to God, that your God, so my God, your will be done, not my will. He's speaking to God, meaning he is not God. Right? So that's the first thing. The second thing I would say is, back to first principles, if we're going to quote a verse from the Bible, how do we know that that is authentic, that part? Because we don't have a chain of transmission going back to Jesus Christ. It doesn't exist. Right, like even in the second century, you know, they had gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then they added to the gospel according to Matthew, according to Mark, according to Luke, because they had to add the words according to because they knew that Matthew didn't write this stuff, and Mark didn't write this stuff, and Luke didn't write this stuff. And on top of that, we don't even know which Matthew it is really, who the, who Mark really is, who Luke is. We don't have their full name, we don't really know who they were. And so if we're going to pick something, I would say first principle, that's my method of, is like what's, how do we establish this is actually source material, right? Credible source material. And then I would form a belief on it. Okay. So those are two things, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just one, la one last comment, that, that, you know, by saying that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, a, a great prophet, great messenger of God, doesn't make him less. It doesn't make him less at all, because it, it makes him more, because that's who God tells us he is, right? And if we add other things that he's not, then we start making him less, right? So that's, some people say, well, you know, you're making him less. No, we're not. We are, we are basically speaking exactly what he said. If you pull all the words of Jesus Christ from the Bible, you know, that red letter Bible, and you read that, you'll say, oh my God, this is like Islam, right? All the other stuff is written by a lot of other people, right?